Hello viewers, Angelo Tactics here, and today we'll be talking about something really exciting, which is redstone circuits. Now I have a lot of redstone circuits here that I would like to demonstrate and show you how they work, but first we have to cover cover a logic gate that we didn't cover um, in the first episode, which is the implies gate. Now it doesn't really have all that much use, but it's just nice to be able to say, I know the implies gate, and I know all the logic gates. So we're going to cover this one, and I'm going to teach you uh, what it does. So let's get started. We have an A input and a B input with this implies gate, and there are two ways we can make it work. It can either be A implies B, or B implies A. Now what does this mean? basically means that the output will not be off unless only A is on, and nothing else, and nothing less, pretty much. So... A is on, output's off. B is on, the output's still on. If both are on, the output is still on. And if none are on, the output is still on. Only case is A. And the same for this one, except the only case is B. And it's pretty much the same for these two, except it's inverted, so it's only going to be on when A is on, only A. Or when only B is on, it's going to be on. And that's pretty much the implies gate. It doesn't really have much practical use, but it's nice to say you know what it is. So now we're going to move on to the circuits. Now these are, this is pretty much the part of redstone that um, it's like games and building trap doors and stuff that you will use this in. You will not use it in super advanced redstone like um, computers and stuff. You probably won't use this much in. But, um, yeah, you're probably going to be using it in games and stuff. So let's get started on it. First thing I want to show you is the T flip flop. I put approximately 12 ticks because it's hard to measure how many ticks this thing is. I just couldn't match it up for some reason. But whenever I click this button, it's going to act like a lever in that when I hit this lever, it's going to turn it on. And when I hit it again, it turns it off. Except a button will be able to do this. And not only just a button, but any signal, any non-constant signal, will be able to do this. It doesn't have to be just a button. So if I click this, um, we can hear the pistons move, and it will change our output. Acting just like a lever. And it's not a lever. So if for some reason you hate levers, then feel free to attach a button to a T flip flop. And that's how that works. Moving on, we have the toggleable pulse extender. Now what this thing does is it allows you to extend the pulse if you want. So here we have an average pulse, nothing special about it, there's our output, just an average pulse. But if I flick this lever, it's now a uh, toggleable pulse extender hit this button it will make the pulse longer as you can see because now these uh, repeaters have something to go into and they power this block which power this block of redstone which powers this redstone here the redstone dust so there we go we have a toggleable pulse extender here we have a pulse shortener it's just the opposite of what I just showed you whenever I hit this button it's going to take whatever pulse we get and it's going to make it shorter so for example, let me just adjust this, for example, let's say we get a wooden button. Dang it, I did not mean to do that. There we go. So we have a wooden button, and I click that. It's going to give us the same output as a normal button, a normal uh, st stone button. So yeah, there you go. That's a pulse shortener for you. And here we have a toggleable input stabilizer. Now, right now, the input stabilizer is on. And basically, an input stabilizer is this. Whenever I give it any input of 1 or on, it will stay on forever, indefinitely. But this one's toggleable because I made a way to remove this block. So if I remove it, just a normal pulse, nothing special about it. Click this, and 
it will keep the signal, whatever signal we give it. If we give it a zero, it's gonna stay zero. If we give it a one or on signal, it will stay on. Pretty simple. Then we have this RS NOR latch. Now, an RS NOR latch, all it does is um, one button turns the output on, and you can't click it to turn the output off. Once it's on, it stays on. But the other button can turn the output off, and it cannot turn the output on. Once it's off, it stays off with that button. So on and off. Now it looks a little confusing how I have it set up here, so I'm going to make it simple over here. So put a torch here. All I have to do is run it like that, run into that. Put two buttons down, and we have ourselves an RS NOR. We can take output from this, it really doesn't matter. Any of these any of these here would be fine to take output from. So if I click this button, uh, the output turns on. If I click this button, it turns off. That's pretty much all an RS NOR does. It's actually pretty simple, and it has a lot of applications. I actually use it in my randomizer up there, which I'll show you. So where were we? Uh, input stabilizer, or snore latch, there we go, I just show you that. Now we're moving on to the hopper clock. So, this is a really simple clock. Um, in case you didn't know, whenever a hopper is powered by redstone, it will not transfer items to another hopper. But, it can receive items from another hopper. So, if I will uh, turn this off, it will start transferring this item I put in, back and forth, back and forth, because they're connected, and this comparator can take an output, from this hopper, which uh, keeps getting this redstone and giving it back, and ran runs into a repeater, and outputs just like that. So we get an output, and then we can turn our clock off, and even if, even if this locks when the redstone's in here, it will still be able to transfer it back in here, because they can still transfer, or they can still receive items when they're locked. And that's how that works. Alright, the next thing I want to show you is a RAM module. Now, I don't know the technical name, and I don't have internet right now, so I can't look it up. I'm sorry about that, but we will just call it a RAM module for now. It has three functions. It can write, read, or save signals. So, um, we'll start off with write. Write does absolutely nothing unless you hit save. So, as you can see, it's just redstone flickering on and off. So, let's say I want to save a 1, which is an on signal then uh, we can flick that, we can hit save, it will save it in there, and then I can hit read, and it will read out a 1, or on signal. And if I want to save a 0, I just hit save, and it will save a 0 signal. And then I can read it out, we get a 0, or off signal, and that's perfect. So how does this actually work? Well, Whenever I flick the right, it does nothing, but it leads into this repeater, which is locked, but it will unlock if I hit this button, which is the save button, temporarily unlocking it, allowing it to save the information in there, and then we have a block right here, and this piston is just to update this piston, so uh, it doesn't really do anything except update this piston below, just so you know, and if I hit read, it's going to push this piston out, allowing the signal, whatever it is, to get through, one or zero. Oops. And that's how that works. So that is your RAM module. It's able to save either a one or zero, which is called a bit, a uh, short term for binary digit. And yeah, that's our RAM module. Now there are smaller, more compact versions, but this is, I think, the best one I can make for example. So I just show you how it works. There are other ones that are really easy to make, they are tileable and all that, but like I said, I just wanted to make a simple one that you guys can understand. So next we'll be talking about a counter. Now a counter, all it really does is count how many signals it gets. So if I hit this, it's going to count to the next um, unit, I guess. Counts to the next, and as you can see, it just continues counting. And you could put this in a game to say, if this person scores five times, you'd have to count five signals, then we're going to give them diamonds or whatever, a, a reward. So we're going to hit this a whole bunch, and it's going to continue counting to the next unit. We can't hit it too quickly at the same time or else it doesn't work. 
We're going to hit it one more time. It's going to reset to the next one. And that's how the counter works. Now let me explain the redstone of it. So basically we have this hooked up um, to a pulse shortener. And basically what it does is it gives out a short pulse. And this redstone is locked on. But the pulse shortener, whenever I press this button, will allow just enough time for this hopper to transfer another item to this hopper. Transferring the signal here. And then once it reaches the end, it will just transfer it to this hopper going all the way down. And even though this last hopper will be locked, it can still receive items. And it will receive the item and power this piston and reset the clock. Well, not the clock, the counter. So that's how the counter works. It's pretty simple. And here we just have some thing I was testing. It's it's used in um, a compact version of ALUs. It's just some redirection technology. You can use it and redirect the signal of redstone and change the output. Give yourself no control over the output. I don't really know um, what you could use this for. I can't think of anything at the moment. But there are applications. For example, I've seen a compact ALU that uses this. And just trust me, you can use it in some things. And here we have a 4-bit randomizer. It's hooked up to an RS NOR. So this is really useful. Let's say you're building a game. Let's say Rock, Paper, Scissors. And you want to make it um, an option to play against a computer. Then you need a randomizer so that the computer will be able to pick Rock, Paper, or Scissors and play against you. And you won't know what it's going to choose. So, 4-bit, um, all it means is 4 binary digits, 4 on or off signals, which we can see by these lamps. And whenever I hit this, it's going to give us a random signal. So here it gave us 0011 if I reset it, because it's hooked up to RSNOR, so we can reset the output. And if I hit it again, it gives us 1101, reset it. And I can hit it again, and it will give us another random, uh, completely random output. 1111. Reset it, and it becomes all zeros again. And that redstone is unneeded. I just thought of that. So that's how this uh, randomizer works. Now I got to show you redstone, like I always do. This right here is basically just a dropper, and it will shoot an item into this hopper, and that does for each of these cases. And basically, what happens is when I click this button, it's either going to shoot an iron sword or redstone in there. It has a 50-50 chance, and if it shoots a sword in there, the sword will output this comparator a two signal strength. So it will reach this repeater. If it's redstone, it will not reach the repeater. And then this hopper feeds it back in when it's all finished. So when I click this, the hopper fed the item back in there. And for this one, it was, for this particular one, it was a zero. So as we can see, um, it must have been redstone. And it transferred the redstone back in there very quickly. And then it's basically just hooked up to an RS NOR. That way, if there's an on signal, it will stay on. And we can hit reset to reset our outputs. I just, I just hooked it up to this uh, RS NOR so that you guys could see the output really easily. And so that it wouldn't just blink and be over. So um, that's basically it. This is the randomizer here. We don't even need, from, the, from these gold blocks where it starts all the way to the lamps, we don't even need any of that. But I just made it so you guys can see it better. So um, that's pretty much it for the circuits. And there's one more thing I want to talk about. It's going to be a little preview I want to give you, for those of you who are still watching, to what my next episode is going to be about. It's going to be about anti-burnout technology. Now... Basically, the only thing in redstone that can burn out is a torch. If I do this, it's going to burn out the torch. And that's kind of a problem sometimes. Because let's say you're feeding an XOR gate, for example, tons and tons of information really quickly. Then these torches are going to flicker like crazy and they can't handle all the information. They may burn out. So we need to build something that isn't able to burn out. So we must eliminate the torches in this design. So basically, the next episode is going to talk about how you do that. And as you can see, an XOR is just whenever one input is on, the output is on. And in no other case, same for this one, 
one input is on the output is on no other case does it work just want to show you real quick and that's it and it doesn't burn out as you can see I will be able to flick this really quickly as fast as I want and it's still functional completely functional it does work completely still so that is um, a non burnout XOR and basically um, I built a few logic gates here and the ones behind them are non burnout versions of that logic gate so we'll be talking about um, non burnout soon hopefully in the next episode and thank you guys for watching once again and please leave a rating comment and subscribe if you thought this was a good video